Well, my goodness, we've had some real weather this week. Um, after a winter where it's been epic all the way through, really, um, relentlessly blue skies, high temperatures, well above average, uh, and light winds, it finally all broke last weekend uh, when we caught the back end of a, an Atlantic depression um, that brought quite heavy uh, rain and strong winds. And it affected all parts of the island, although it was really localised in some cases. I mean, for example, on Saturday, uh, Guatiza had torrential rain, and so did Costa de Guise, neither of which are very far from where we live in Aria, but we only had a couple of drops and a bit of distant thunder we could hear, uh, and it was fairly gentle. And then the roles reversed on Sunday where Aria had the heavy rain and uh, that produced that kind of brown water that swirled down through the barrancos and ended up uh, making the ocean at Arieta look completely like brown soup. The weather kind of settled down for a few days, but it came back again on Thursday of this week and caused quite a bit of disruption at the airport. In fact, it affected us. We were flying from Tenerife North Airport. We spent the week there and we were due home last night. I don't know. I think we were leaving at seven o'clock due to get in here at, seven, at 1950. Um, and in the end, our aircraft was delayed by an hour and a half and we landed the wrong way, if that makes sense. So we landed in from the uh, land side of the island um, in the dark, which was uh, quite interesting because there were very strong crosswinds and you could actually feel the aircraft crabbing as it came down on its final approach. The forecast for the next few days continues to be windy and it's quite windy outside now, uh, although as you can probably see from the skylight above me, it's, uh, it's a beautiful sunny day but with very strong winds at the moment. It's expected that by the middle of next week, everything will have settled down back into the pattern we'd already become used to this winter. Hotel occupancy in February was over 90%. The actual figure was 90.1%. That's an astonishingly, astonishingly high number for a month where traditionally we have a bit of a lull, a bit of a relaxation period leading into Easter and following on from Christmas. But 90.1%. And the other amazing figure I saw is that 46% of the international travellers who came to Spain in February came to the Canary Islands. That's just amazing. I quite like the story of the new life preservers that have been put out in uh, onto the beaches of Puerto del Carmen, 33 of them in total. And they've actually been designed by somebody from the Canary Islands and they're a patent. And uh, what they are is a, a little canister which weighs 390 grams that you can hurl into the sea to someone who's in trouble and it will self-inflate to create a kind of uh, cape that they can sit on and, and relax on while somebody comes to rescue them. And they're fitted with two carabiners so they can be towed back to shore uh, via a, a jet ski or something like that. We'd like to thank you for all the support you've given us for this relatively new and young YouTube channel. It seems that you're all enjoying the news that we're doing each week, so thank you very much for all your likes, your comments and your subscriptions. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so below so that you see this every week. The video will be coming out without fail every week. And also, just to remind you that if you've got any questions about anything to do with Lanzarote, not just these videos, feel free to post them as a comment. I read every single one of them and I respond where there's a question that, um, that needs a response or where anyone requires any kind of help or advice about the island. Now, Jet2 are one of the biggest uh, carriers to Lanzarote and they have bases all over the UK. In fact, this week, I think they had their inaugural flight from Liverpool Airport. Well, Jet2 have just announced they're going to create a new base in Bournemouth and they're going to have two aircraft there and uh, they'll be doing flights to Lanzarote twice a week from April 2025. So that's a new, decent, relatively easy airport to use for all of the people who live in the central south and the southwest of the UK. If you were here 
during the period immediately after the COVID lockdown, that sort of period in time where you could visit the island, but there were still restrictions in place, you'll probably remember that one of those restrictions was that smoking was banned on the terraces of bars and restaurants. And the Canarian government are proposing that they bring that rule back in on an ongoing basis. So if they're successful with getting this through the Canarian Parliament, smoking will be banned on the terraces of all bars and restaurants in the Canary Islands. So my guess is that it would then be up to the bar or restaurant to kind of create a smoking area that's off the terrace or in another part of it. Um, personally, I think it's a good thing. Uh, there's nothing worse than trying to eat a meal when somebody a couple of tables away is smoking a cigarette or a cigar. And the problem we have here, of course, is that with the, the winds we get, it can swell right across the patio. So even if you're well away from the people who are eating food, that, uh, that smoke can still be impinging on their enjoyment of the meal. So we'll see if that comes off or not, but it's going through the Parliament at the moment. There was an amazing story last week about a Scottish tourist who boarded a flight from Glasgow to Lanzarote and was disruptive on the flight, um, almost inevitably uh, intoxicated. And the flight crew alerted the police and he was met by the Guardia Civil when the aircraft landed and he was arrested. And he promptly head-butted a guard, Guardia Civil officer and broke his nose. So he was then further arrested for assaulting a police officer. That was on a Friday. The authorities decided to have a quick case for him and set a court date for the Sunday. And he was expected in court on the Sunday following his arrival on the island on the Friday. Unfortunately, he absconded and he jumped onto a Ryanair flight to London on the Sunday morning before he was due in court. I think the obvious question is why wasn't his passport taken from him? But that's not the general way the Canarian authorities work. They normally will only do that in a very serious case, which might involve a serious crime like manslaughter or murder or something like that, in which case those people would probably be remanded in custody anyway. Um, so in this case, his passport wasn't taken from him. Um, the Canarian attitude tends to be, well, if he's expected in court, we're sure he's going to turn up. And he obviously didn't. So uh, a bit of egg on the faces of the Guardia Civil officers who were obviously extremely angry about one of their guys being headbutted and having his nose broken and the person not being brought to justice. I imagine they will certainly ban him from visiting Spain again. Uh, it could be that they'll follow it up through the uh, extradition process to try and bring him back and have him charged for the crime. But... We hear about these incidents so often where people are behaving badly on aircraft. In some cases, they have to divert the aircraft to a nearer airport to have the disruptive passengers taken off. Um, I just don't understand it. You know, why do people drink so much at the start of their holiday and why are they so badly behaved? It's the bizarrest thing and I just can't get my head around it. For those of you who use the buses while you're here, you'll be pleased to know that as of the 1st of April, all the intercity buses, those are the ones that run the kind of main routes around the island between the resorts and Arecife and so on, will have card readers installed so that you will be able to tap your, your phone or your credit card in order to pay for the journey. I think this is a real step forward and hopefully it will speed up the whole process when a lot of passengers are getting on board at any one stop. And finally, this week, the Indian ambassador to Spain has been visiting the island and there were some lovely pictures of him and members of the Indian community in Lanzarote um, being pre or presenting a plaque to uh, Oswaldo Betancourt, the president of the Cabildo of the island. Uh, we have a sizable Indian community in Lanzarote and we also have big Chinese and South American and Italian and British communities as well. And I love the way that this island with a 23% foreign population has become this kind of melting pot of cultures who, you know, all work, 
rest, play, sports, and enjoy life together in the sunshine of Lanzarote. So good to see the uh, uh, Indian ambassador to Spain visiting Lanzarote. And that's it for this week. It's uh, Semana Santa, as we call it here, or Easter, as most people call it, uh, here in uh, Lanzarote and across the rest of Spain. The Thursday and the Friday this week are the public holidays. So on Monday, we're all back to work as normal. Uh, all that remains is for me to wish you a very happy Easter, if it's something you celebrate. And if not, just have a great weekend. And we'll see you uh, with the news next week from Lanzarote. Bye for now.